Apple Unleash event. Wow, mind blown. I have been waiting for some time now for Apple to release their Pro Silicon and it definitely does not disappoint. This is probably one of the more exciting Apple events that they put together this year and I'm just really impressed by the machine that they have released. There's a lot to talk about these new silicons and also the design for the new MacBook Pro, so let's jump right into it. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. As we go through all of these aspects for the new machines and the new silicon, I'm also going to talk about the configuration later on in this video too, what I recommend. And if you want to go order one now based on what I'm seeing, you can use my recommendations here. But if you want to wait, I have a few machines that are coming into my studio with different configuration. I'll definitely do a lot of benchmarking on them and I'll also be doing display calibration on them too, which is something that I do a lot of on this channel. So let's jump right into it. The new design. I mean, when we take a look at this on the side, what we can tell you right now is that there are way more ports on these machines than there are in the M1 machines that have come before, especially the portable ones. For example, I have the MacBook Air M1 here and there's really only two ports on the side of the device. One of them, if I'm using for charging, that means I only have one port left. On these one, you have three USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 devices on there, which is absolutely fantastic. You have an HDMI built in, you have the SD card slot that's coming back and also the MagSafe charger. So a lot of really great things are coming back into this machine. And I have been comparing the size a little bit between the 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro and the new 16 inch model. It is 0.4 pounds heavier than the previous model. So this means that Apple does not really mind building in a little bit more bulk into the machine to get the performance. Now regarding choosing the machines, at one point in time, we have to really choose between, do you want a smaller machine with a less powerful processor or a bigger machine with a more powerful processor? Well, pretty much now, you just choose the size that you want. You can really pack in the M1 Max into the 14 inch MacBook Pro chassis and that's really amazing. Now what these M1 Pros and M1 Max does for me is that it solves a few problems that I have with the M1 processor, ports being the number one issue. I already mentioned that. The other thing that it does solve though is the max amount of RAM. These system will allow me to go up to 64 gigabytes of memory. So on the M1 Pro, you can choose up to 32 gigabytes and on the M1 Max, you can go up to 64 gigabytes of internal memory on the system. And that's definitely going to help out a lot, especially if you're using a program such as Lightroom, which are memory intensive. I think that 64 gigabytes is definitely going to give this system a much bigger boost compared to the 32 gigabyte one and definitely a bigger boost than the 16 gigabyte base configuration, which I don't recommend. And I'll go over that in the configuration in a moment here. Next up is the ability to connect multiple display to the system. That is one big thing because on the M1 processor that I've come before it, for example, the MacBook Air M1 here, because it already has a built-in display, I can only link up one more display to the system natively. So essentially with the M1 processor, you can only run two displays. With the new M1 Pro and M1 Max, I can run multiple display on the system. And that is now really putting the system on par with my 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro. There are other improvement in the display aspect as well. I mean, the built-in display is no longer just using an LCD display, it's actually using mini LED with local dimming zone. The same technology that is in the iPad Pro M1, the 12.9 inch. And that display or that iPad has an amazing display and I can't wait to test it on these machines. Especially what I'm really curious is how is the color response going to be? How is the calibration going to be? And when we run the calibration on these new displays, how is it going to look? These are big questions that we have as pro photographers, so I'll make sure to definitely cover that. Now, depending on the pro app that you're using, if you're using Lightroom, I would definitely choose a machine that has more memory, system memory or RAM configuration. But if you're running Capture One, the story may be different and you may want to choose a machine that has more GPU cores, for instance. That's something that I'm gonna have to test out with the machines that are coming in. So I'll definitely share with you my finding on that one for sure. Now let's talk about the design. As I was watching a keynote with one of my friends, we noticed that the design itself, especially the side profile, what you're seeing now, and also 
What you're about to see in just a moment here is really reminiscence of that iBook Era computer from the Power PC generation. So I'm glad that Apple is going back to the design roots a little bit and giving us a lot more ports on the system. This is going to be really cool. What I also like about this is that they have forgo the touch bar and put in a full size function key in there. And the area for the keyboard is recess out and is also in black. That's kind of really nice is a good thing that they have done there. I am never the person that is really opposed or against the touch bar, but I don't feel that there are many app developers that have took full advantage of the touch bar and not a lot of users like have really good positive experience about it. And a lot of times what I find myself doing is that I'm still reaching out to see if I can touch the function keys rather than the touch bar a lot of times because I'm used to my full size keyboard. So I'm also glad the touch bar is not there, but it was very interesting to see what Apple have tried to innovate with the previous generation's MacBook Pro. Now, beyond this, let's talk about some of the configuration. I'm sure there are many other aspects about this machine that are probably too much for me to cover in this video. And I also want to just get onto the configuration and what is available to us as well. As I mentioned before, between this 14 and 16 inch model, you no longer have to choose if you want the lighter machine or if you want the full fledged 16 inch machine. You can put the M1 Max processor inside the 14 inch model and that is really awesome. So on the 14 inch configuration page, we can now see that there are two configurations here. There is a base and a slightly upgraded model. Here's a hint. If you want to upgrade everything on your machine and still retain the 512 gigabyte SSD, my recommendation is to start the configuration from the base model and it will allow you to do just that. The other thing too is that just by choosing this base configuration here, you can still put in all the more powerful processors that are available in the upgrade model as well. I'm also going to go back here and quickly show you that for both of these configuration, Apple has the M1 Pro processor in there. You can still get the M1 Max. What you have to do is do a custom configuration as we are about to do now. So on here, there are five processors we can choose from. Three of them are the M1 Pro and two of them, or two of the top end, are the M1 Max. Now here's the thing. The base M1 Pro and the slightly upgraded one is only available in the 14 inch model. If you choose the 16 inch MacBook Pro, Apple will automatically upgrade you to the M1 Pro 10 core CPU, 16 core GPU automatically. My personal recommendation is for you to choose this configuration even if you're choosing the 14 inch model. This is going to give your computer the extra graphic capability should you need it down the road. For example, if you're linking up external displays to the system, it's definitely going to help out. By giving your system more headroom now, it's actually not a bad thing because you may use it down the road. Here's the thing. I think that this will probably be the minimum configuration I would recommend for pro photographers and also for some video work as well. But if we're using Capture One, my suspicion right now is that going to the 24 core GPU or the 32 core GPU is definitely going to bump Capture One performance up quite a bit. If you're using Lightroom or Lightroom Classic, those are generally more memory demanding than GPU demanding. So definitely upgrading the memory on your system is going to help out a lot. And that leads me to the next point. If you choose the M1 Pro processor, right now you have between 16 and 32 gigabytes of memory, go with 32. I can't emphasize this enough because in my testing on these M1 machines, I run into an issue where it pops up with a dialogue saying, I need to close down some apps because the system has run out of memory. And I am not the only one running into these issues. I have many other followers on my channel that run into the same issues that have commented on my videos. So I know that this is a problem, especially if you're a multitasker and you're using this in pro workflow. So definitely go with 32 gigabytes of memory. Now, if you want 64, you have to upgrade to the M1 Max in order for you to access 64 gigabytes of memory. And by choosing the machine configuration from the base level up, I can max out the processor, the memory, and still have 512 gigabytes of storage. Personally, I don't recommend this just because 512 is not that much. You're going to fill this in pretty much no time. And the memory, the storage on these machines are going to be much faster than what you can get with an external SSD right now. My recommendation is to go with the one terabyte SSD as the base. And if you think you need more, two terabyte is still a really good option. 
I think the 4 and 8 terabyte is really starting to add a lot of bulk with regards to pricing and I wouldn't go that route. I think that when you go from 2 to 4, it may be cheaper just to get an external SSD rather than, you know, upgrading the internal system storage. But that's just my personal opinion. But at least go with a 1 terabyte because if your system needs to do swap, meaning that the memory is full and it needs to write to the SSD, well, it has some room to do that. And the other thing, as I mentioned before, the SSD built into these new machines or these new M1s that we're configuring now, M1 Pro and M1 Max, are much faster than the external SSD that you can get. Beyond that, on the 14-inch model, you have the option to choose the power adapter. But here's the thing. Beyond just the base M1 Pro processor, Apple automatically bumps you up to the 96-watt power adapter. The only options I can choose is if I go with the 8-core CPU, 14-core GPU, I can have the 67 watt or pay $20 more for the 96 watt. So with all Apple system, you can use a more powerful power adapter with the system that uses less power because it, the ship itself does auto regulation for you or regulating the power so you don't really have to worry about that. But that's just something interesting to note there and you can choose the keyboard and so forth. So let's now have a look at the 16 inch model. For the 16 inch, we get three configurations. So we still have the base. And as I mentioned before, the base model is now the one that I recommend even for the 14 inch model. The difference between the first and the second one is just only the SSD. And the last one just pretty much put the M1 Max, the top of the line processor in there. And it really gives you an idea as to how the price scales. But again, if you want to still configure your system with 512 gigabytes SSD, start up from the base and you can still add everything up. On the 16 inch, model we have three processors that we can choose from one pro processor and the other two are the max so the difference here is that you're adding gpu cores to your system that's pretty much it when it comes to memory definitely go with at least 32 and even if you choose the m1 max i would you know obviously you would have to go with 32 anyway 64 gigabytes memory i really want to know if it's going to make a difference in lightroom classic and lightroom cc or not so i'll definitely be testing it out I have two machines coming in with two different memory configurations, so that's going to be fun. And again, upgrade the SSD to at least one terabyte, if not two. But if you can afford to get more than that and you need more, just, you know, by all means, get more. One thing as a caution for any of these new Apple machines is that when you order it, configure with the option that you want right away because none of the parts are user upgradable. That means everything is soldered to the logic board and whatever you get is what you're going to have one year, two year, three years down the road. The next thing is that the SSD on these machines, at least based on the previous machines, they're non-removable, they're soldered to the board. So make sure that you have a good and an adequate backup solution going on because if something happens to your machine, there may be a slight chance that you may not get the data out of there. Or if you can get the data out, it's going to be very costly. So a little bit of caution there. So these are my recommendations for the new Pro machine, especially if you're going to use this in a professional workflow. I don't have a machine in my studio to do testing, but like I said, I have multiple of them coming with different configurations. So as soon as I get one, I will benchmark them, I will do a screen test, and I will share with you the result. If you want to have your machine sooner, my recommendation is to use the configuration that I share here and pre-order one right away because if you start to configure, for instance, a 16-inch model with the M1 Max processor, the ship time is already starting to slip into December. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe and hit on the bell if you're new. And remember, in art we trust.